So what time you guys get in here anyway? No, the ferry is, uh, the ferry is... The hotel is easy to get to from the ferry. All right, cool. Yeah, the sooner the better. Hey, it's all yours. No, no, I just wanted to congratulate you. Congratulate me? For being Shelby's fiance. Oh, yeah. I'm Shelby's next door neighbor. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm Meet Howe. Yeah, I'm looking forward to meeting all of Shelby's friends tonight at the Coles house. Tonight? Yeah, at the, the, um, the cocktail party. You gonna be there? I guess I haven't made that particular guest list. Oh, man, so I guess what? Guest lists are tough around here, huh? <laughs> For some. It helps to be Shelby's fiance, doesn't it? So when will Dr. Otis be back? No. No message. Thank you. Hmm. Has Lincoln called you at all since you've been here? No. Yet you continue to leave messages for him. Mother, please. Well, if he doesn't care anything about you, he sure ought to want to know about that gorgeous daughter of yours. You have made your feelings very clear. to relax, huh? Yeah. Weddings can be a lot of work. <laughs> I got married in a tiny little chapel in France, near Avignon. I was living there at the time. Ten guests, and it still felt like a huge production. Europe, huh? Mm -hmm. That must have been exciting. Yeah. Why'd you come back? I wanted to raise my children in America. Mosquito. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but uh, coming back was hard on my wife. Once people found out she was married to a Negro, and they started treating her like a Negro, too. It was very tough on her. And it killed our marriage. Well, Mead and I know exactly what we're up against. And, you know, things have changed so much since the war. What things are you talking about? You ever drink from a colored-only water fountain? Or had beef stew served to you in a paper bag? Or ever have to stand in the back of a bus because there are no seats left in the colored section, but there are 20 empty seats in the whites-only section? I mean, these things exist, Shelby. Yes, in the South, they do. So you and Meade are limiting yourselves to living only in the North. I heard Meade doesn't have a job. Maybe you'll have to go to another city to find work, perhaps even the South. Where'd you hear that? Your wedding is the talk of the island, Shelby. Everything about your wedding. Well, that's not true. Mead is a musician and a composer. He's going to be performing here on the island tomorrow night and then at the Blue Note in New York next week. Next week? <laughs> what? No honeymoon? Mr. McNeil, I think I would rather take this walk alone if you don't mind. I do mind, but I can't do anything about it. But I can tell you something about running, Shelby. It doesn't change anything. Dr. Benson, so nice of you to come this evening. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you so much. Hi, Gertrude. This is my fiance, me, Howell. Hi. How are you? No. Let's put this back. Dr. Johnson, thank you. Thank you. This is my fiance, me, Howell. Hi. Hello, Dr. Johnson. Shelby, thank you for coming. Fix me color. Mother, it looks fine. Eunice Pastings, neighbor and old friend of the family. Nice to meet you. Willa Lynch. Neighbor and old friend of the family. Thank you. Congratulations. No. You can't have champagne. In line. Do we know all these people? Uh, no, I, I don't. I don't play with the sister. Me? Don't be bashful. Tell him. He's quite an accomplished composer. He's going to be headlining at one of the most popular jazz clubs in New York City. Oh, have you ladies met my new press agent? 
<laughs> Are your parents hear me? Uh, no. Um... Mead's father is ill, very ill, and his mother decided to stay there and care for him. Lovely woman. Oh, that's too bad. I can imagine how much it hurts when a parent has to miss their child's wedding. However, they will be trying to make it, won't they, Mead? Oh, good. Here's Liz. Ladies, I heard that you just came back from South America. Why don't you tell me about it? Let me tell you. 